Hello students, this is Ashwini from Chinta.com. In this video, I wanted to share with you this particular book. It's a fantastic piece on combinatorics, especially for mathematical olympiads like IOQM, American Math Competition, RMO, INMO and so on. Let's talk about this particular book. It's called Combinatorial Techniques. This is authored by Sharad S. Sane. So, this book, chapter 3 to 12 of this book in particular, is very useful for mathematical olympiads. There are some extra chapters. Uh, these extra chapters are on group theoretic treatment. Personally, I think that this is an important part as well. It will give you a sort of a bird's eye view of some parts of combinatorics. I'll come to that chapter 14 to chapter 16 a little bit later. But let's explore the first 13 chapters. Well, the first 13 chapters, I, I'm showing you the index page. The first few chapters are on inclusion exclusion principle and permutation and combination. These are fundamental counting techniques and these are very useful to solve some basic level counting problems. Then what the authors do is that they introduce something called probability theory. Now there are two ways to think about probability. The first way is this, that suppose you have an experiment and there are let's say 50 possible outcomes of the experiment and 10 of them are what you called success. So what you do is that you divide the success by all the possibilities and you get something called a probability. Okay, so the question is, can you count the number of success and can you count the number of possibilities in total? Because if you can do these two things, then you have to just divide and you get something called probability. So for some aspects of the subject, probability is just another way to do combinatorics problems. It is nothing separate called probability at that level. So they discuss that basic probability theory in chapter 5 and then they go on to a bit more classical treatment of the subject probability theory. They introduce random variables. This is a very useful viewpoint because random, random variables allows you to treat probabilities as functions and then you can use certain function theoretic techniques to handle probability problems. That's where it comes out of the stage of simple counting and becomes something more than that. So chapter 5 and chapter 6 are devoted to that. In chapter 7, they come to the Eulerian circuits and the graph theoretic techniques. You know about graph theory, right? There are vertices and there are edges connecting the vertices. Graphs, that's what a graph is. Now, many real life scenarios are modeled by graphs. That's why they become very important in the modern mathematical theories. For example, let's say you want to model all the train stations and the train tracks in India. Then what you do, you can think of each train station as a vertex and each train track connecting two vertices uh, or two train stations as an edge. What you get is a graph and then you can solve a multitude of problems. For example, you can build a signaling system so that no two trains will ever collide, mathematically speaking. So graph theory becomes very important and Leonard Euler was the first person who actually studied graphs carefully and in this chapter 7, they talk about Eulerian circuits and a gra bit of graph theory. They call it parity because graph theory is ingrained with the notion of parity. Chapter 8 is on pigeonhole principle. It's like a standalone kind of a chapter. But pigeonhole principles have good applications in graph theory. Probably that's why they put it after the chapter on parity. Pigeonhole principle is like this, that suppose you have five holes and you have six pigeons. Is it possible to put all the pigeons in the holes such that every hole has only one pigeon? That's not possible, right? Because there is one more pigeon. There are five holes, six pigeons. So pigeonhole principle simply says that there will be at least one hole 
which has at least two or more pigeons, no matter how you do it. This simple principle gives rise to a multitude of interesting problems. And that's what chapter 8 is on. Chapter 9 is devoted to geometry. So there is a big, big connection with geometry and combinatorics. For example, there is a question related to tessellations. In simple terms, if you have a geometric shape and if you want to triangulate it, that is, draw small triangles which are then glued together to make the entire figure, that kind of problem arises in combinatorics when you say, how many ways are there to do it? How many ways are there to color it in certain ways? So, this is one of the cornerstones of, of this particular book because many, many combinatorics books completely avoid the geometric part of it. So, chapter 9 is really critical in that sense. Chapter 10 is on Sterling numbers. So, I'm not going to go deeper into it because this is a very specific type of numbers which come up in the, let's say, in partition problems and in other types of counting functions problems. So, I'll not go much deeper into it, but chapter 10 is actually fascinating. They talk about Sterling numbers and Catalan numbers in quite a bit of detail. Chapter 11 gives you a very special tool to handred, ha handle Cometox problems. This is on recurrence relations. And then, obviously, chapter 12 is generating functions. So, chapter 11 and chapter 12 together gives you the basic set of algebraic tools to handle combinatorics problems. The last section of the book is absolutely fascinating. It brings the world of group theory into the world of combinatorics. It talks about group actions on sets that is the way to do modern combinatorics actually. So, in, a, in total, this particular book gives you a very comprehensive tour of combinatorics. It brings in geometry, in, it brings in group theoretic techniques, it brings in recurrence relations and generating functions, and it also touches upon all the basic strategies like bijection, like pigeonhole principle, inclusion exclusion principle, and so on. I am sure that if you study this book carefully, you will gain Olympiad standard skills for, in combinatorics. Thank you for watching this video. If you like great, great mathematical problems and if you like Olympiad style problems, then check the link in the description. We have beautiful programs on Olympiads, mathematics, physics, computer science and research. Uh, all the best. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.